Church of Springfield Gardens. It is it's truly an honor and a privilege to encounter you, to meet you, and to be with you here on uh, what I have been told is your Stewardship Sunday. Your Stewardship Sunday. As before uh, I break the bread of life, hopefully briefly, I don't know how long your service normally lasts. All right. It's a good church. I suspected you were, given everything that I have heard thus far. Uh, but I've chosen two scripture readings that are coming from the lectionary which means the universal uh, church scripture readings that are being preached in most if not maybe all churches on this uh, Sunday in October. And I'm going to ask if you will listen for a minute as I read the lectionary readings of scripture. Reading from a translation, a contemporary translation of the Bible called the Message Bible. The first scripture uh, is in coming from the book of Job, this month, the lectionary is dealing with our friend Job quite a bit. And I will be reading in your hearing from the 23rd chapter of Job, verses 1 through 9, and then verses 16 and 17. No need to try and follow because I uh, won't be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Here now, Job 23, 1 through 9, 16 and 17. Job replied, I'm not letting up. I'm standing my ground. My complaint is legitimate. God has no right to treat me like this. It isn't fair. If I knew where on earth to find God, I'd go straight to God. I'd lay my case before God face to face. Give God all my arguments firsthand. I find out exactly what God is thinking. Discover what's going on in God's head. Do you think God would dismiss me or bully me? No. God would take me seriously. God would see a straight living man standing before God. My judge would acquit me for good of all charges. I travel east looking for God. I find no one then west, but not a trace. I go north, but God's hidden God's tracks. Then south, but not even a glimpse. Whenever I think about it, I get scared all over again. God makes my heart sing. God Almighty gives me the shutters. I'm completely in the dark. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Here now the reading of the Gospel from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. And this particularly pertains to stewardship. As he went out into the street, a man came running up, greeted him with great reverence, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, Why are you calling me good? No one is good. Only God. You know the commandments. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Honor your father and your mother. He said, teacher, I have from my youth kept them all. Jesus looked him hard in the eye and loved him. He said, there's one thing left. Go sell whatever you own and give it to the poor. All your wealth will then be heavenly wealth, and come, follow me. The man's face clouded over. This was the last thing he expected to hear, and he walked off with a heavy heart. He was holding on tight to a lot of things and not about to let go. Looking at his disciples, Jesus said, Do you have any idea how difficult it is for people who have wealth to enter God's kingdom. The disciples couldn't believe what they were hearing, but Jesus kept on. You can't imagine how 
how difficult. I'd say it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for the rich to get into God's kingdom. That set the disciples back on their heels. Then who has any chance at all, they asked. Jesus was blunt. No chance at all if you think you can pull it off by yourself. Every chance in the world if you let God do it. Peter tried another angle. We left everything and followed you. Jesus said, mark my words, no one who sacrifices house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, land, whatever, because of me and the gospel will lose out. They'll get it all back, but multiplied many times in homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land, but also in troubles. And then the bonus of eternal life. This is once again the great reversal. Many who are first will end up last, and the last first. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. Let us pray. Amen. Most gracious God, we come now asking that it be less of me and more of thee. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be now acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The great reversal. As we look at the scripture reading, the lectionary reading that came from Job this morning, many of us can certainly identify with Job. In that familiar story, we know that Job is a human being who in the beginning of the book was very wealthy, very rich not only in material terms, but also rich in terms of spiritual terms. The Bible teaches us that Job was an upright man, that Job obeyed the laws of God. He gave his tithes and offerings. He looked out for the poor. He raised his children to honor and to worship God. But in this familiar biblical story, we know that Job's fortunes change. And as we encounter him in this 23rd chapter, everything has been taken away from him. He has fallen upon hard times. His children have died. All of his material resources have been decimated down to nothing. And even his very health has been attacked. And so we find Job in the middle of a recession. He has no job. His fortunes have been reversed. And he has no possibility, or so he thinks, of things getting any better. We find Job's body in the condition that I saw many people uh, up till yesterday. I went to the VA hospital to visit my father in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I don't know if you have ever been to a veteran's hospital in this country. It was the first time I had ever entered one. And when you enter the Veterans Hospital, you find a large community mostly of men. And in, those, in that hospital, you find men who have given of their lives to service for this country. They have fought in wars so that you and I sit in church in peace on Sunday morning. They have given of themselves so that you and I can buy houses 
show had lost so much. As we look at the gospel reading that comes out of Mark today, the question that we should ask are the same questions that Joe asked. How can we in this country, in the middle of a recession, when some of us don't know where our next dollar is going to come from. Where most Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. Where most of us do not have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting and gathering uh, income for us in the bank. Where the middle class is carrying the burden for the entire nation and the rich are paying very few taxes. Where we don't know, many of us, whether our jobs will be there from week to week and month to month, and if we lose our jobs, I lost a job recently, whether we will get another one. Our questions are Job's questions on the Stewardship Sunday. In our country, when we are privileged, so-called First Nation people are experiencing material hardship, where is God? Where is God? Like Job says, I, if I knew where God was, I would go there and say, God, do you see my condition? Eternal life. 
charge and we hold on to control. If that is the case, that will stand between us and God. And Jesus is standing in front of us just like he stood in front of the rich young man and says, look, people of African descent, give up the control. You know, I preach in churches now all over the city, all over this nation, and all over the world, and have done it for a long time. Like the scripture about the Pharisees and the rulers, usually when I walk into churches at my age, I am somebody by, by now. I have a PhD in religion. I wear the robes and the garments, and I'm used to going in the churches and being somebody, being in control. I remember some years ago, I walked in a church, a visiting church, as I am visiting this morning. And I came in a little bit early. Big, prominent congregation. And they had invited me to preach. I was somebody preaching at this famous church. So as I walked in, one of the elderly mothers of the church, in that tradition, the older women are called mothers in the church. She must have been in her 80s or her 90s. She didn't know who I was. She asked me to, she said, uh, young lady, because uh, I was young then, will you come to the kitchen and help me get those dishes up on that shelf there? I, I can't reach them. And so, you know, I put on my home and Bible and all the stuff you bring when you visit churches, when you are the preacher. I put them down and tried to reach up and got the dishes down for her. Thank you. 
Sunday. 